Real talk. How do you win and achieve your real estate goals in any market? Having a realistic understanding and expectations of what's going on in the market is super critical to your success on your happy house hacking journey. And in this episode, we're going to share with you the number one thing that you need to know to win in any market. Hello, and welcome back to the Happy House Hacking Podcast. We are your hosts, Owen and Camille Schwagerly, and we are here to navigate the home buying process with you. We are realtors, investors, and happy house hackers, and it's our goal to educate and empower you in your upcoming purchase. Today, we're here to talk about real estate realities. We want to have a real conversation about how to navigate the process as a buyer and properly set expectations as a buyer. Whether this is your first time buying a home or even your fifth time, this is going to be a good show for you. And the number one thing, the takeaway, you're going to want to wait till the end to hear what that is. And so stick around. Okay. When entering the market, first, what you need to figure out is what's the current lay of the land? How is the market? Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? Are there lots of listings on the market that are sitting for a very long time? Or are there very few listings that are going very quickly? And so these are the questions you need to ask as you start the process looking for homes. Yeah. So right now we are in a really strong buyer's market and seller's market. What's the difference? Oh, yes. Okay. What's the difference? Right now we're in a really strong seller's market. And the reason for that is because we have fewer than six months of inventory available for buyers to purchase. And so what that means is if there were no new listings that hit the market today, how many months would it take for us to run out of homes? And the answer for our county today, I, I have it pulled up, is 2.3 months. So that means we only have 2.3 months supply in our area to before we run out of homes. That's very low. And to put that into perspective, like a stable or neutral market would be six months supply. So if you had exactly six months supply, that's a balanced market. It doesn't favor buyers or sellers. It's just neutral. And if it has over six months supply, that's when it tips over into a buyer's market, which we haven't seen a buyer's market in over 10 years. Right. Yeah. One of the most memorable buyer's markets is the recession from 2008, right? That's when everyone was trying to sell their house. They were in desperate, desperate times and buyers were getting homes at far below what was average for that time. And that's how you had short sales. So we're not seeing pre-foreclosures -foreclosure, pre happen or short sales happen um, nearly to the extent at all of what happened back in that time. So that was an example of a really strong buyer's market where buyers could get away with offering well below the asking price and getting their yeah. offers accepted. But that's not reality today. <laughs> what are some of the things we normally see in a seller's market? Multiple offers because we have buyers competing for the same exact property. So we're seeing multiple offers that go above asking, waiving contingencies or significantly shortening them. Um, we're seeing buyers just having to do whatever it takes to get their offer mm -hmm. accepted. Yeah. And whether you've bought a home six years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or even just a year or two ago, uh, the market's always changing. And today's market is completely different than the market of one year ago, two years ago. And so uh, we, we sometimes come across people who say, oh, well, the market's going to crash or, oh, I've been in this before. I know exactly. We're at the top and I'm going to wait till prices drop or, or the bubble's going to pop. And they use past experience for this current market. And what we like to do is actually look at the data. What does the data say that the market is doing? And so that is something that's super important. So uh, realistically, if you want to make a goal and make a plan happen in real estate today in this market, you need to meet with a real estate professional. That's going to be your first step on this journey to successfully buying a house and succeeding and winning during this competitive time. 
Exactly. And a good real estate professional is going to take the time to sit down with you on the front end for about 30, 45 minutes, do what we call a buyer consultation. And our buyer consultations consist of educating our clients about the current market realities, looking at the data, looking at market trends, and then talking to them about the overall home buying process. And we have an episode, if you'd like to go back and listen to that, about the home buying process that you can listen to in detail. And that's exactly what your real estate agent should be telling you before you start looking at homes, before you write offers. So that way you are as prepared as possible for that exciting day when you do go write your first offer. Mm -hmm. What else do we go over in that initial buyer consultation? Well, one of the big things we talk about is financing and we're not lenders, but what we like to do is we like to give lender referrals and say, why don't you reach out to this lender to find out what your purchasing power is? Because once we know how much house you are able to afford, we can tailor your search to be within that criteria because it doesn't make any sense for us to look at homes that's outside of a buyer's purchasing power. Right. You know, uh, it makes me think of a time where maybe someone reached out to us and wanted to see a home that was $200,000 higher than what they were approved for. And mm -hmm. the risk that you run is if you, if you start looking at houses that are way above your purchasing power, you're just going to fall in love and then be heartbroken when you can't actually buy that house and the lender tells it to you. So in order to avoid the headache, the heartache and the hassle, just shop within that budget that the lender comes up with for you. Right, right. And even when we have had those buyers come to us asking to see homes that are well above what they're pre-approved for, their thought is maybe they could still get the house for what they're pre-approved for. So mm -hmm. if we're looking at a home that's $200,000 outside of your pre-approval letter, the odds in today's strong seller's market of you getting your offer accepted to be 200,000 or more less is so low that it's it's just not not even worth not even worth it. Yeah. It's it's a waste of your time as the buyer and it's a waste of your realtor's time as an agent mm -hmm. who also has a family and other clients that they're yeah. servicing. So unless we're in a market where the market is showing buyers are getting crazy crazy good deals, then we we really need to do our part as professionals to educate and empower buyers to be shopping within their means. Yeah. And if the property is newly listed, if it's fresh on the market within the past three weeks, there's virtually no chance of a offer that low getting accepted. And let's say they've been on the market now for three months, you have a better shot at something like that. They are way more motivated. They've obviously been sitting on the market, no one's giving them their price. And the, so in those situations, it's worthwhile to entertain an offer and, and putting one forward. But if it's brand newly listed and just a few days on market in great condition, if there's a lot of showings lining up, it's very unrealistic that you would get your offer accepted. Just to put it in perspective right now in our county, homes are selling for about 2% below the asking price. What does that mean? If a house is listed for $100,000. It's selling 2% below, meaning you'll get maybe a $2,000 discount at the end of the day, which is not even close to sometimes people come in 10%, 20% below the asking price. Yeah. So it, it's really important to know your market before you start shopping. And that's how you get rooted in reality with the type of market you're in in order to make the best decision for you and your family. Mm -hmm. Something that we also talk about in our buyer consultations are what are your expectations for this move? What's your expectation for us as your realtor? And what can we expect of you throughout this process? Mm -hmm. We we strive to be as communicative as possible throughout the transaction. And we also expect our clients to be communicating with us so we can help them. We also want to know what their timeline is. Are they looking to make a move in two months because their landlord is kicking them out? Or do they have two years because they're not in any rush? They would like to upsize soon, but they don't need to necessarily. So we really dig deep on timeline. We, we encourage buyers to have their crystal clear criteria set, and we can help them do that in a buyer consultation. 
So if you are in a different market than where we're talking about, we encourage you to reach out Mm -hmm. and interview agents and ask them these questions and move forward with the agent who's going to guide you on this journey towards successful home ownership. Right. And that agent is going to help inform you about what the state of the market is, not only as a whole, but for a specific property. For example, let's say you're really just obsessed with this new listing and hit the market and it's the only one in that neighborhood. It's perfect. It's turnkey. Chances are you're not the only one who loves that house. And if there's going to be multiple offers on a property, you got to be ready for a dog fight. It's going to be a challenge. It's like in football when everyone's jumping for the ball, they want that one house and there's just this giant dog pile of people trying to get the ball because that house is so desirable and there's only one like it on the market at that time since inventory is so low. So if you're not ready for that, if you're not prepared to jump in the dog pile and fight to win that house, maybe this isn't the market for you or maybe that's not the right house for you. If you're looking for that perfect turnkey house, it might be better to sit out and wait or maybe make a plan to buy new construction or something where there's less competition than that situation. So that's the importance of meeting with your real estate professional because they're going to walk you through that and then they're going to be an advocate for you when it does come to showing you properties to help put you in that position to win and get your offer accepted. Exactly. And I think it's important that we talk about what is the role of your real estate professional because who you work with absolutely matters. So what can you expect in general your real estate professional to do for you? And from what our experiences and what we've seen, you can absolutely expect your agent to fight for your best interest, to educate you on the market and say, hey, there are already four offers on this house. We cannot go in below asking price. We have to be as strong as possible, put our best foot forward because we have no idea if we're going to get a counter offer. Mm Mm-hmm. No idea. We have situations all the time where multiple offers come in and the seller just picks the highest and best the first time. So we need to educate our buyers to be able to do the same in order to increase their chances of getting their house that they want. Right. A lot of times people think, okay, I'm just going to, I'll write at the asking price or I'm going to write slightly under the asking price because if they don't like it, they're obviously going to counter me because I'm amazing. And why wouldn't they want to sell their house to me? Well, the reason is because if they have eight offers on the table and all of them are good or even better than your offer, chances are they don't want to go through the hassle and the paperwork to give you a counter offer to say, come up to a price because they don't know what your budget is. They don't want to know what your needs are. And so that's something a good agent is going to walk through with you. What price would you be happy if you got this house, but okay if you didn't? Meaning if it's sold for $1,000 to somebody else, you're totally okay with that. You, you are ready to walk away. You need to be that prepared. And that agent you choose to work with should be helping you get to that position. Right. It's a good it's a good sliding scale for us to say, hey, if it sold for $1,000 more than your offer or $5,000 more than your offer, would you be okay with that? And that's the benchmark to use in order to determine what is your true highest and best. Mm -hmm. Now, a real estate professional is also going to run market comparables for you and show you, hey, this home is actually priced really well on the front end. Or they're going to say, actually, it's overpriced. That's why it's been on market for three months. Here's where we can come in and make a more realistic offer. So that is something your agent will do is show you what the market is saying and help empower you to make the right decision for how you want to write your offer. A great real estate professional can also help inform you about the neighborhood. If there's any outlying issues or conditions that are known, such as foundation issues in that area, or if it's a possible high uh, risk fire zone or earthquake insurance, these are the kinds of questions and things that uh, a good agent should have some general knowledge. They're obviously not a specialist by any means in these areas, but they should have some general knowledge that can help advise you on certain locations. Right. And they can connect you to the right vendors, like a home inspector, a pest inspector, um, a good lender, of course, Mm -hmm. in order to get you in the position to buy the house that you want. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when working with people, they say, I want you to bring me a good deal. And, And so they expect their agent to find them a good deal. And what 
does that even mean? What, what is a good deal to you? This is particularly uh, popular with our investor clients and they, they don't have a crystal clear criteria. So it's very hard to find them a good deal or they, they want something that pencils out. Okay. But what are the numbers? What are we working with? Is it all cash? Do you have financing? What's your down payment? We don't know what a good deal is to you until we sit down to make that game plan. And it's unrealistic to expect your agent to underwrite every single deal for you and run the numbers and say, hey, this property is trading for this, but the after repair value would be this and your renovation costs are going to be this. That's very difficult for an agent to do on every single property, especially properties that you won't buy. Uh, so that's another thing that your agent most likely will not do for you. Yeah. And that's why it's important to have those conversations because when we get asked, hey, find us a good deal. What do you know? It's one of the most subjective questions we get because like you said, Owen, we don't know what a good deal is for mm -hmm. that person or their family unless they come to us prepared with that crystal clear criteria. And then we'll be able to help guide them and send them the right listings or send them off market opportunities that meet the criteria they've set in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One other thing that your agent won't do for you is they aren't going to be the one to do everything in your personal finances to get you into that position. And the example is when you hire a personal trainer, a coach, they come in and they are there to motivate you, encourage you. They help spot you. They help you do the reps. They help you get the job done of getting your fitness in check. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to show up to the gym, to have a diet, to follow the diet, to do all the activities that the personal trainer and coach is telling you you need to do. So in the same way, the real estate agent is like your coach for this upcoming move. They are gonna give you all the tips, the next steps, the action plan, and then it's up to you to have the discipline to implement it. That's right. And so much of that comes down to communication, which I just wanna to touch on again. It's critical to stay in close communication with your agent throughout the whole transaction. Buying a home is an emotional roller coaster. Even if you're buying a home as an investment, there are still emotions involved. And it's so important to be talking to your agent about areas that you feel uncomfortable. Maybe it's a home inspection you don't understand and you want their help reading it. Or maybe you are having a hard time gathering all your finances together for the lender and you just need a sounding board mm -hmm. in your agent, right? Sometimes um, I get... I get on phone calls and then the buyer's talking to me and all of a sudden they're like, oh, Camille, I feel like I'm talking to you like you're my therapist. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's True. sweet. That's a compliment. That means you trust me. Now, it's so important to be as transparent as possible so that way your agent can help guide you because we've been in situations where we're figuring out, hey, does the buyer actually want the house or are they just getting cold feet? Mm -hmm. There's a difference between canceling because a house is not for them, it's in really bad shape versus canceling because you just are, are nervous about it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then in a few weeks or maybe even a few days, you'd regret that cancellation and the house has already gone to someone else. So that's where it's so important to maintain strong communication and find an agent who is going to walk you through that emotional roller coaster with grace and handhold you the whole mm -hmm. time and not make you feel dumb for asking questions. Camille, can you think of a time in, in an escrow with a buyer where the, the buyer, we, we already got the property under contract, got a good deal on the front end. And then they maybe had some expectations that weren't realistic when it came to negotiating repairs. Oh yeah, that that happens quite a bit actually. Um, I I think I'm even kind of working on something similar right now. But what I've learned is that it just comes down to managing expectations on both ends, where we are in the buyer console and we're saying, look, this is going to be a process that's involved where we're talking all the time, and it's going to be. A roller coaster. We're going to have up and downs. We just need to be resilient together through it. So sometimes when I'm trying to discern, are we wanting, are we talking about a cancellation because you're simply getting cold feet or because the house is actually problematic and it's not in your best interest to purchase? What I like to do is go back to the motivation and I say, 
Well, in our buyer consultation, you told me that you needed to move because of X, Y, Z. And this house meets the entire alphabet, Mm -hmm. right? It meets all your criteria and more. So what's the, what's the truth? Mm-hmm. And then that usually opens the door for the buyer to think, you're right. My actual concern is in regards to financing or my actual mm-hmm. concern is in regards to making a move. Do I move before I get repairs done or after? And it's usually something else. Very rarely, surprisingly, is it because the house is in bad shape, is in such bad shape mm-hmm. that the client doesn't want it anymore. It usually comes down to a value, Mm -hmm. a a monetary value. So that's where we're almost doing like a second consultation in the middle of a transaction, which is totally normal and good because you want – this is such a big decision that you want to make sure you're 110% on board because the last thing you want is to buy a house and a few months later regret it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. When it comes to renegotiating, it, it's valid to go back and ask the sellers for health and safety concerns to be remedied or to get a credit or a closing cost credit or concession. However, it can become unrealistic to expect the seller to completely redo the roof or to completely reinstall the HVAC system. There are certain things that a buyer might ask that just go above and beyond what an, a reasonable seller is willing to agree to especially given the market condition. Because remember, if you're in a competitive situation where there's multiple offers, and even if they accept your offer, they still have backup buyers who would buy that place in a second if they knew you were getting cold feet and getting a little bit shaky and wanted to back out or renegotiate to get some massive big ticket thing repaired. So Right. So the main thing we want to leave you with today is who you work with matters. We've said this before on previous episodes, and we just want to reiterate, we are seeing a huge increase in the number of buyers hitting the market in 2024 that we want to prepare you as a future home buyer this year to make an educated decision about who you're choosing to partner with on this upcoming purchase. You want someone who will be an advocate for you, someone who will empower you, someone who will come from contribution, who will communicate effectively with you. And in turn, you want to be as clear as possible and as communicative as possible while you're navigating the somewhat emotional roller coaster of buying a home. Absolutely. So we want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Happy House Hacking Podcast. And if you want to take that next step on your happy home ownership journey, then reach out to us. We want to meet with you. We can meet at our office in San Luis Obispo, or we can meet through a video conference call and get to know you better, get to know your goals. What are you looking for? And then make a game plan to help you achieve that goal of happy home ownership in California. So please reach out and like and subscribe to our podcast and we'll talk to you soon.